What is going on everybody? Resale Renegade here, resalerenegade.com. If you'd like to visit my site, check out the annotation um, or click the link in the description below. And uh, yeah, it's cool. It's got a blog, uh, or I got a blog. There's a lot of stuff on there, um, articles and other crap. It's not just videos. So check it out. Um, and now, on to the show. Today I want to talk about retail arbitrage, venue arbitrage, whatever you want to call it. And basically what that is, is when you go into a store, a regular brick and mortar store, and it doesn't always have to be, Some, sometimes you can get stuff online and do just online arbitrage. In fact, I know a lot of people that do arbitrage between Amazon and eBay, um, because there's definitely a price difference there. But for the purposes of this video today, we're going to talk about going into brick and mortar stores, places like department stores, Walmart, Costco, that kind of thing, buying items there that are on clearance, and then turning around and selling them on either eBay or Amazon and collecting them the difference. Now, I've been doing this for a long time, um, and uh, there is some pretty hard and fast rules that I've come up with that I buy according to. Um, and that I sometimes I go outside of the, the rules a little bit, but not a lot. Um, and the reason for that is because I've learned that it is very easy to lose your ass in retail arbitrage. It's somewhat risky. So if you pay attention and you look for the right stuff and you buy the right stuff, you can actually make a lot of money. But more importantly, if once you buy it, you sell it quickly, that's the easiest way to make money. So let's talk a little bit about what I look for uh, when buying things at department stores and stuff like that. My main four things that I look for when I'm do, trying to do retail arbitrage is income potential, quantity, the size and the weight of the item, and the demand for that item. And the reason that those are the four things that I look for is because that's what enables me to make the most money. Um, after doing some trial and error and, and picking single items here and big items there and that kind of stuff and losing money here or losing money there, I've just kind of come to the realization that what I need to be buying needs to be quick moving. Um, it needs to be lightweight and easy to ship because Amazon jacks you on shipping. It needs to be in a quantity of items because it takes the same amount of effort to list one item on Amazon as it does to list 10 items on Amazon. The only difference is in your shipping and packaging time, which really, I don't mind doing that if I'm blowing out items. Um, and then my last and most important is the income potential because obviously you wanna be making money. So let's talk about each of the four. Um, we'll start with the most important, so let's start with income potential. For my own personal um, retail arbitrage business, I focus on items that I, I can double my money on and that are greater than $10. And the reason being is if I find a $2 item that I can double my money on, that's a $4 item, Amazon's gonna eat that all up in fees and I'm not gonna make any money. Um, so it has to be greater than $10 and $10 is an absolute minimum and it's generally only on items that I'm getting for like a buck or something like that. I'll, I'll buy an item for a dollar and sell it for 10 all day long. Um, but it has to be something in quantity because I have to be able to sell that item over and over and over again to make it worth my while and listing and doing all that other stuff. So, um, double my money and be greater than $10 in value. I target items that are mostly between $25 and $100 uh, because I found that that is pretty much what sells the best for me on Amazon. Some people go even a little bit higher than that. The second item on my list that I always look for is quantity. I want to make sure that I'm buying multiple items, not just single items. Because as I'm going through and trying to list things, especially on Amazon, I can literally click through and all I have to do is change an inventory number in order to sell 100 of the same item as opposed to listing 100 different items. So when out buying, I'm always looking for quantity. I'm always looking for items that there are more than, say, five so that I can list on Amazon, I can put quantity five and I can sell that item over and over again essentially. Now, that's not to be said that I don't, if, if something else fits within the other three and there's only one of them, I'll definitely pick it up. But I try to always go for quantity. That's one of the things that I look for. The third thing that I look for is size and weight. Um, if it's something that's huge and big and bulky, most times, unless there's a huge, huge margin, um, I'm not going to pick it up because, or I might pick it up and sell it somewhere else, but I'm not going to pick it up and sell it on Amazon or eBay because nine times out of 10, you're not going to get as much as it's going to cost you to ship in shipping credit from Amazon. 
And on eBay, yeah, you can charge your own shipping. A lot of times I found it actually advantageous to use Amazon for retail arbitrage just because it's a little bit more streamlined, a little bit more of a retail type environment for the marketplace and you tend to get a little bit higher prices. That's not to say that there's not some oddballs on eBay that go for higher prices because there definitely is. So you, you should be checking both eBay and Amazon when you're, when you're valuing your items. The things that you're going to be looking for should be lightweight so that you can ship them easily and smaller so that they can fit into, you know, convenient shipping packages, but also smaller so that you can store them more easily because storage space is very valuable. If you're storing items that are making you a dollar and they're eating up all your space, where you could be storing items that were making you 10 to a hundred dollars, well, you can see how you might be wasting storage space with those dollar items. So always focus on smaller things that are easy to store, easy to ship, lightweight, so that you're not going to get robbed by the postal service while you're shipping it out. The fourth thing that I look for is demand. Um, and the reason being is because I don't want things sitting in my storage forever. I want them to move as fast as I can. As a general rule, I don't buy things that are under or that are over 100,000 on the sales rank and I don't buy things that don't look like they're selling on eBay. Now, here's the caveat to that. I look when I'm when I'm scoping out my items, here's what I do. I scan it with my my iPhone app and if it pops up and it's under 100,000 on Amazon or if if it's like 150,000 or something like that, I'll still look at it on eBay. And the reason being is because on eBay, you can actually go to eBay completed listings and see how many sold. A great way to figure that out in a pretty close approximation is to go to eBay, list, eBay completed listings, right? Find, let's say, take for instance, you're buying a power adapter and you know the model number to the power adapter. Type that model number into the, to the eBay completed listings. You might get 150 results of completed listings. Now go back into the eBay app and go down to just sold listings only. And it, when it refreshes, if there's only 10 results, well then you know that only 10 out of those 150 sold. So the selling volume of that product is probably not that great. So you can look then, you can compare that metric to Amazon and you can kind of deem whether or not the market has a huge demand for products. And the products that I'm looking for are in high demand. I want them moving. I want them gone fast. Um, and the reason being is because I need my money back as soon as I can so I can go double it again. Two, the longer you hold on to items, the lower they become in value. Most items, especially items that you're buying on clearance, are dropping in value rather quickly. And that's because stores throughout the nation are starting to put them on clearance. So you really have to be on top of your game and you have to list your items quick, get them sold quick, and send them out. Um, and before the ball crashes, I guess you could say. Um, and there's no more money left to be had because rest assured you're not the only person doing this and if people are competing with you in a price war, they're driving the prices down. So those are the four things that I look for. Now that we've talked about those, let's take a look at two products that I've purchased. One was a winner, the other one was a sort of winner. Alright, so the first product that I purchased, this is the winner product. This is a Sony power adapter for the tablet. I don't even know what tablet it's for actually. These I got 75% off of the marked price and they had been marked down twice. And the reason why these things were so cheap, because I know everybody's wondering why the hell were these so cheap, is because the market demographic in this geographical area just has no need for them. That doesn't mean that the market demographic on eBay doesn't have a need for them because there's people all over the place with Sony tablets that might need an AC adapter but the market demographic in this area, they just couldn't push the product. And so they marked them down and they marked them down and they marked them down and then they 75% off for them. These things retail for $39.99. I got them for $2.49 a piece. And that's the kind of deal that you're looking for because I can list these on eBay and sell them for 35 bucks all day long real quick. I can put them on Amazon and probably sell them all day long at $39. Those are a winner. Now let's take a look at one that's kind of, well, let's discuss first why these are a winner. One, huge margin, okay? There's easily a, a $30 margin after fees on each one of these things, and I bought nine of them. Um, two, there was quantity. Like I said, I bought nine of them. Three, the size and weight of these things, they're not that heavy, and they're not that big. I can throw these into a padded envelope, or I could even throw these into a, uh, like a bubble mailer 
wrap them up, send them on out. Boom, done, easy. Um, and fourth, there's a lot of demand for them. Every single one of them sells that I've seen. So there's, there's a high enough demand for me to list these and get them sold pretty quickly. Now let's look at the loser product. And I only say loser product because it's just worth less and it costs me more time to sell and get my money back. So that is the Keurig carousel. Um, and the reason why this is the loser, first of all, I got this uh, at a local market here for 15 bucks and they're selling for 30. Okay, so I doubled my money. I met that goal. It's greater than 10, I met that goal. Um, I flopped on the quantity because this is the only one that I have. I thought when I was looking at it that size and weight would check out. Turns out though, this is actually a relatively awkward size box. You have to put it in a, a, a larger box than I have on hand and it costs about $16 to ship because it's heavier than I thought it was. So it flops in that department. And the problem with that is that because I can only sell these for 30 bucks and Amazon only allocates about $7.99 for shipping, I essentially am paying double that for shipping. So I'm going to come into my own profit by $8. And I only had a $15 margin in the first place. So now instead of having a $15 margin, I have a, what is that, $7 margin? So I'm going to make $7 on this. And there was only one of them. It's probably not worth my time to have listed and sold this thing when I could have been out finding deals like the power adapter. So those are two examples of products that you might find when out doing retail arbitrage. And those are also four of the general guidelines, the general outlines that I look for when I'm looking for products that are, are good candidates for retail arbitrage. You might find some different uh, qualifiers. You might find some different metrics. It's all in a matter of what you do in your business. This is just what I do in mine. Um, but I would love to hear what you do in your business. So if you would, please leave me a comment in the, in the comments below. Let me know what you look for when you're doing retail, retail arbitrage. Um, and as always, guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate the views. I appreciate the subscribers. Um, if you're not subscribed, like I said, subscribe. Um, thank you again for watching. Like, favorite, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.